Hi there, welcome back to the storied house. So where were we in our previous video? Yes, we were at that point where Baya Ji was being accused of being rude. So let's continue from there. Baya Ji was nonplussed. What does that mean? He was not at all affected. For a moment, he was tempted to knock him down with his box, but realized that he couldn't afford to do so. He was so angry with that higher class man's words, he thought I'll give him one with this box itself, but he did not. Why? He couldn't afford to do so. Besides, now he had come back to his village for good. Remember, he's retired and now he's come back home. It's better to have cordial relations with everyone. He was to spend the rest of his days on this soil and would be interred in the same soil. What does interred mean? That means once a person is dead, you bury him in the soil he lived in with all the rituals. So he even wanted to be buried in the same village. So he didn't want to create any problems. He would not be able to return to Pune or Bombay thereafter. It was not a good policy to incur the hostility of anyone. Incur means to bring upon yourself hostility, uh, not liking. So he did not want anyone to not like him at this moment of his life. He did not want to incur the hostility of unfriendliness of anyone in the village, least so of the Patil, because high class Brahmin, better keep him in your good books. The village headman, there you are. So he said in a meek tone, meek in the sense, in a soft, respectful tone, Sir, why spring this on me even before I set foot on the soil of my forefathers? I have to stay here till the end of my life. So he replies, why aren't you going back to your job? Asked Bujaba. No, sir, my service is over. I've turned 60. With this, Bayaji lifted the load from his head a little to put it back in place. Then you've collected your fund amount. Bujaba was taking his measure. That means he was trying to get information about from Bayaji what has he brought home after retirement? Yes, sir, Bayaji replied with pride. His whole life's hard work, yeah? That's why he has pride in himself. How much? Bujaba asked greedily. See, he already has his eyes on it. Not much. What can a daily worker earn? Bayaji answered. Why won't you mention the figure, man? Bujaba persisted artfully. Cunningly, he was trying to get out information. Some two and a half thousand rupees, Bayaji gave the correct figure. Bayaji, you have a heavy load on your head. Go to your house first. We'll talk at leisure later, Bujaba said in a mock sympathy. He is not actually feeling bad for him. He's just being sarcastic. Yes, yes, Bayaji mumbled and walked in the direction of his house. At the moment, Bayaji was the proud owner of two and a half thousand rupees in cash. So it made no difference whether he was an untouchable or a Buddhist. Nothing mattered to him, just the joy in his heart. If only one could swindle out of the untouchable Bayaji. Who's thinking this? The head, the village head. He has bad thoughts in his mind. If only one could swindle. Swindle means taking something by deceiving that person. Swindle out of the untouchable Bayaji or rather Buddhist Bayaji, four or five hundred rupees, that was enough. With the thought in his mind, Bujaba entered his wada. In Marathi it means big mansion, big house. Back to Bayaji, exchanging pleasantries with people he met on the way. Exchanging pleasantries means Hello, how are you? Oh, thank you, I'm fine, how are you? Those are called exchanging pleasantries. With people he met on the way, Bayaji reached the public building called Takya in the Untouchables settlement. Looks like these people are made to live in a different section of the village because they are untouchables. 
the building was named Buddha Vihar by those who had embraced Buddhism, a place where there is no discrimination. How nice. As Bayaji neared Buddha Vihar, the children who were playing with a ball made of rags finished their game and cried out, Baiju Nana is here! Baiju Nana is here! and scampered in the direction of Bayaji's house. They're carrying the good news to Bayaji's family. Bayaji's 85-year-old mother quickly scrambled to her feet. What joy to receive your son. She had aged much, but her old worn frame was still sturdy, just like her son, and her teeth were strong enough to break grams. She could thread a needle without help, so her eyesight was also in good condition. When she heard of Bayaji's arrival, her heart swelled. When does your heart swell? With joy, love and affection. As Bayaji came in, his wife concealed her joy with the end of her sari and took down the box from his head. Usually, wives are supposed to be under control of their emotions in villages. They are not allowed to show outpost of emotion. His grandchildren clung to him, held on to him and began to twist the folds of his dhoti. The neighboring children watched the scene in idle curiosity. The neighboring children were like, hey, what's happening in their house, you know? Come, get into the house, children, said Bayaji. His mother walked out with a bent back and told Bayaji to wait outside the door. Bayaji obeyed. Now this is one of our customs. When someone comes home, what do we do? The old woman came forward, poured some water over the piece of bread in her hand, moved it around Bayaji's face and flung it away as an offering. She ran her palms over his cheeks and pressed her fingers on her temples. All eight fingers gave out a cracking sound. Bayaji's family was doing well. So that is how his mother welcomed him, so that all the evil eyes on him will have no effect on him. That is a tradition that's coming from our great-grandparents. Now about Bayaji's family. Bayaji's family was doing well. Good to hear that. He had eight children in all, six sons and two daughters. The daughters had been married off and had given birth to children. Looks like they're fine. The elder son looked after the fields. The next two sons were in government service. They have jobs. The one after them was a school teacher and the sixth one was still studying. Since they knew that Bayaji was coming home for good, the elder son in service and the two daughters were already home to greet him. A grand welcome, a warm welcome. All of them wondered what their father had got for them from his lifetime's earnings. They were so curious, what did daddy bring home? The next day, when Bayaji opened the box, we all know what it has. It revealed only some pots and pans, nails and photographs. Looking at these, the elder daughter asked, Nana, how is it that you haven't brought anything for us? Bayaji paused after these words. His eldest son was godly. Immediately, what did his eldest son say? Neither we nor our wives want anything. Tell us what you would like us to do. How different his children are. Bayaji was amused that his daughters thought in this childish manner even after having had children of their own. He ran his eyes over all his children and said something. Look here, children. If I had brought new clothes for you, they'd tear one day. If I had brought an ornament, it would wear out someday. Out of my earnings, I wish you to have something that will last longer. See how wisely our parents always think for us. You might think they're not giving you those little enjoyable things every day you want but they always have the longer picture in mind they always look for your long-term comfort so there's always a reason if they do something look children 
ours is such a large family. Even at meal time, we used to sit by turns or sit crowded, knocking our knees together. I wish to build a house out of my earnings. And it has to be a storied house because so many children. How about two children, two families on each floor? Yeah? The usual three portion house won't be adequate for us. Adequate means enough. It won't be enough for us. All were happy with this plan. The plan was finalized and the foundation of the storied house was laid on the auspicious day of New Year Day. So what do you think happened next? Did they happily build the house? Do you think the village would have allowed it to happen? Remember, we're talking about social issues. In our next video, we'll continue this story and then we'll see what happened next. I hope it's something good for biology. Let's wait and see.